that's close. And it's low. The authorities obviously do patrols around the area. It's funny, I've spent years chasing bad guys, whether it's narcos, terrorists, and now I'm sat down here with a bunch of narcos hiding behind a bush, hoping I don't get caught by a bunch of Marines. I'm Jason Fox. I spent 10 years in the Special Forces, where I hunted down drug lords in Afghanistan. Yeah, these are good. This is what we used. Now, I'm going to Latin America. Hola. The dark heart of the global drugs trade. Going into the barrio now. One of them's got a shooter. This time, I'll be travelling unarmed. In the car, in the car. Come on, come on. To try to understand them yeah. from the inside. Starting in Mexico, I'll make contact with the feared cartels, more powerful than the state. In Peru, I'll meet the producers at the bottom of the supply chain. And in Colombia, I see how the legacy of Pablo Escobar still runs deep. Para nosotros no era un patrón, era un dios. This is a world where violence is a way of life. Yo he matado en mi propia mano unas 257 personas, así y así. Pues si ustedes la cagan hacen una cosa mal, pues sería ya cosa que ustedes la cagan. And the criminals are the ones in charge. If we were here without your permission, what would you do with us? Gringo o gabacho. I'm in Mexico, where the drugs industry is bigger, more organized, and more deadly than anywhere else on the planet. I want to see how the notorious cartels operate from the inside. I've been warned that my every move will be monitored by the narcos from the moment I arrive, and if we get on the wrong side of them, even the police can't save us. But I've found two men with deep contacts in the cartels, prepared to help me. Hello. Hey, Yuli, how's it going? Nice Welcome to, meet to Mexico. Me. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm going to introduce you to my friend. Uh, His name is Miguel. Miguel, hey, hey Foxy. Nice to nice meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, likewise, thanks. <laughs> he's the local journalist that is going to help us in here, because awesome. he has like a very good connections yeah, with the Sinaloa organization. Thank you. Welcome to Culiacan. You better look after Cradle me. Cradle of narco-traffic. <laughs> Thanks very much. Culiacan is the stronghold of the Sinaloan cartel. From a small group of marijuana traffickers in the 60s, this family-run business has grown to become the single most powerful and dangerous drugs cartel in the world. It's made their hometown one of the richest cities in Mexico. What was it like growing up here? What's it like to live and work around these parts? And you know what's a funny thing? When you are a little boy, you want to be one of them. Because you see, they drive these very nice luxury cars. They hang out with the most beautiful women. They have power, they have money. And you are like, hey, you know what? I want to have that. The Sinaloan cartel employ more than 100,000 people, and they far outnumber the local police. What can you tell me about uh, Culiacan and uh, the sort of area we're in, how dangerous it is? It's a very controlled city, and it's as controlled that sometimes you're going to see, you can stop in any intersection, and you're going to see kids cleaning up, cleaning up your windshield but they are, in fact, uh, informers, like lookouts, like, you know, watching who is driving. You know, the way you look, you, I can tell you are a foreigner. And the first thing in the mind is going to be, oh, perhaps this is a DEA. And once, if they believe that you are a DEA, we will have a tail the whole time on our backs, the whole time. He's probably, uh, I mean, he looks harmless enough, but I'm sure that he's probably, uh gonna fucking phone someone up in a minute and tell them that there's a dude with a camera. 
Well, maybe he's just a clown. Driving around, the striking thing is how normal it all feels. But this is a state in the grip of the narcos. Nos das una habitación, por favor. Gracias, brother. It's lovely. Nice. They have a bit of color. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. I went to check in, asked for the other one, and uh, I'm going to be next to you. Nice one. Cheers, Uni. <laughs> Take care. The man who built the Sinaloan cartel is Joaquin Guzman, known as El Chapo. For years, Forbes magazine ranked him more powerful than the president of Mexico. So total was their control here that his family were openly taunting the authorities with displays of wealth and power. El Chapo was finally captured two years ago in this brutal firefight with Mexican Marines. But his empire continues without him, and today it's said to make about three billion dollars every year. My fixers have had a call from one of their contacts high up in the cartel. They are willing to meet me as they fear nothing and no one. We are given instructions to go to a petrol station on the edge of town. Vetted by cartel security, we eventually get the clearance we need to continue on. I want to see how they keep control of their territory, which is under constant threat from rival cartels. Our destination is an area called the Golden Triangle. Our lives are now completely in their hands. Uh, shall I put it down? Pretty soon. Very soon. Yeah, it's big. Great by the looks of it. Stay in the car, please. It's all a little bit edgy at the moment while we do the initial meet because uh, these guys have never apparently done this before. Um, they've never taken people like us out on patrol. So we're in, the, in that moment where we're trying to sort of relationship build. They've turned up on the other side of the river, basically. We're on one side, they're on the other. We're going to start. Start off with a, uh, a boat journey. We're here on the Sinaloan countryside in basically the cartel's backyard. It's their, their territory, their land. And uh, we're about to meet one of the patrols that keeps it theirs, basically. Anyone that tries to get into their business, get into their territory, and they dish out the, the good news. Not dissimilar to some of the stuff I've done in the past. You're always meeting people that are not too sure about who you are. Everyone's packing guns. Everyone's on edge. So there's always a, there's always a bit of sketchiness beforehand, and then we go in, smooth it over, have a laugh, and hopefully not piss them off so we don't get shot. Buried in the middle of nowhere, never to be seen again. Finally, someone arrives to take us across. What's your good still? He needs to change his spark plugs. Muchas gracias. Wow, 
Hvor er det? 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 Hvor er Thank you for letting me uh, come along today. See what you get up to. Poca gente dejamos entrar aquí, pero tratarse ustedes sí no hay problema. So, um, what happens if, um, say, the the army or the marines or the police come? What 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 do you do? What what does protecting the area mean? Sería una tontería enfrentarnos al ejército o a la marina porque si tumbamos diez cabrones vienen vienen mil. If you do have clashes, who's it normally with? Es con los, con la gente de, de afuera, de, de otros cárteles, tal vez, el, el muy famoso Los Zetas. De un área lejos, ya, si un carro extraño entra, ya, ya sabemos, ya viene, igual si viene el gobierno, desde que sale de la ciudad, aquí ya también sabemos. So if, if we were here without your permission, and you saw us wandering around, what would you, what would you do with us, what would you say to us? O sea... Gringo o Gabacho ah, piensa que es DEA o Interpol. Es la realidad. Do you, um, do you enjoy your job? Me gusta ser cabrón. <laughs> How bad a motherfucker are you? Mejor pregúnteme qué es lo que no he hecho. Lo que no he hecho es matar reporteros ni... ni, <laughs> ni Ni así como usted, es lo que no he hecho nada más. Lo demás lo que quiera he hecho. Es que me... He entrado, he entrado. Le, le puede dar el corte ahí porque viene el helicóptero. The commander slips away to take charge of the situation and leaves us with a few of his men. It just sounds like they've got, obviously got informants and guys on the ground all over the place. They've just obviously heard there on the radio that the heli's coming in here. I think I could just hear something then, actually. There you go. They obviously do like heli patrols. When they're up there, they sit up there looking for stuff that's of interest. That's fucking close. And it's low. It's coming down. It'll come down that river. If it does land and it's near us, you put that down because, because, from a distance, it looks like you've got something on your shoulder, like a gun. There it is. It's there. Right in that dip. See it. I mean, that's fucking close. I mean, I've, I've been, I've, I've done heli patrols, and um, when you're up there, you fucking, you see everything. It's, you, you think you can hide, but it's, it's, you can see everything. You, your eyes are attracted to movement as well, and they'll be looking for any excuse to have a fucking scrap because they do. You always look for an excuse to have a scrap. Dudes have turned back up. All is safe. The Marines have fucked off. <laughs> you seem very organised. Can you explain to us what happened then? Estaba ya reventando algo por allá, yo creo, no sé. Y y ahorita están dos aquí a milla y media. Están, están en la tierra y ahorita que se levanten a ver qué pasa. Ahorita está, nosotros le, le nombramos caliente, está caliente porque está el gobierno muy cerquita, realmente. 
hubiéramos dejado eh, la entrevista para otro día, pero eh, tocó que <ríe> tocó venir en el mal momento. <ríe> Compa Canelo, la, la, la carterita que venía no la copió esa que viene llegando para acá para el rumbo a mi barrio. Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. It's clear how disciplined and tightly organized these killers are, run like a military unit and more in control of this area than the actual military. Attempting to keep the public on their side, the cartel try to stop negative press. They kill journalists who cross them. You see the green balloon? That's, oh, yeah. that's where the memorial is. Reporter Javier Valdez was gunned down in broad daylight as a warning to others. And actually, he was driving Another car stopped in front of him. Two armed guys yeah. got the hands, aimed, it, uh, the, aimed their guns to him. He just get off the car and they started shooting. He was a very well-known journalist. He was my friend and colleague. And you know, this is another sign that no one is safe in this city. He was shot 12 times. He, at 12 p.m., he works for Rio Dose newspaper, which the translation would be river number 12. So it was 12 all over. 50 years, yeah. one month and one day. He was 50 years old. I still, can, I, I still, up to this point, I still can't believe what happened. Mm. It's crazy. Sorry, man. Thank you, thank you, folks, I appreciate, appreciate that. I want to understand the mindset of the kind of person who killed Valdez. After our first encounter passed with our incident, the cartel agreed to let me meet one of their most ruthless hitmen. We're told to drive to the outskirts of town and wait for further instructions. Finally, we get the call. Okay, this is him. Uh, he sent me a, a message. I, I need to listen. Affirmativo. No, váyanse a la comercial. There's lots of cops or army around, so they are trying to secure the area. We need to, we need to turn. Okay, follow this one. We're directed to a poor suburb on the edge of the city. We're told to stop filming before we're guided to a cartel safe house. The man I'm about to meet is high up on the government's hit list. He goes by the name Guero. Uh, ya estamos listos. Ya estamos listos. ¿Cómo en cuánto tiempo? Four minutes. Okay, gracias. <laughs> Let's get ready for this. And uh, yeah. everything's cool? Yeah, four minutes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, there's people cutting around outside by the sounds of it. We have mask on. None of us knew it at the time, but this would be the last interview Guero would ever give. All good? First of all, thank you for coming to meet me today. I, uh, I really appreciate it. No, pues no, no. So, do you feel that it was dangerous for you to come and meet us here today? Así es. Si lo considero riesgoso. And obviously, it's a risk to us as well. Si hacen todo bien, no. 
La verdad, y no, ahorita yo no los tengo en riesgo, como le digo, yo tengo gente afuera que me va a avisar si viene el gobierno y para eso mismo tengo yo a la gente, para no ponerlos en riesgo ustedes. Pero pues si ustedes la cagan, hacen una cosa mal, pues ahí sí estarían en riesgo, ahí sería ya cosa que ustedes la cagan. If you could describe your job, what would you say it is? Mi trabajo actual, se puede decir que soy sicario y tengo mis laboratorios, pero sí podría tomar el, el nivel de mi jefe. Para tomar el nivel de la organización, pues ya son palabras mayores, ya estar muy arriba. Y ahí ya peligraría mucho. No me gustaría subir tan alto. Okay, can you describe to me what the lifestyle is like for you in the organization? A veces buena, a veces mala, pues todos los días peligroso. ¿Qué le puedo decir? Como todos los casos, a veces tiene uno dinero, a veces no tiene nada. But, but do you enjoy it? El dinero. Es lo que más disfruta uno. Y pues, ¿qué le diré? Pues cuando sale uno con mujeres, cuando te compras carro, cuando te compras ropa, cuando compras una casa. Pero todos los días me da miedo. What are you afraid of? ¿Qué le tengo miedo? Cuando, cuando voy a matar a alguien que me estorba, porque pues no sé si voy a regresar. Y pues eso es lo que no disfruto y es lo que me da miedo. A few weeks later, Guero's fears would come true when he was shot dead by the army. En la madrugada se informó que militares abatieron en Culiacán, en Sinaloa, a un hombre llamado Luis Alfonso Murillo, se le conocía como el Güero Ranas, o sea, era considerado como uno de los principales generadores de violencia en Sinaloa. Even in death, the narco's wealth and power is still very much on display. This graveyard outside Culiacán is the last resting place of the drug lords of Sinaloa. We pull in unannounced. We have tombs. You're going to see tombs here that are worth over 700,000 US dollars. That's a whole lot of money for just a grave, for just a tomb. So you, why do they have like bulletproof glasses? Why do they have plated bars? Why do they have this uh, marble come from uh, Italy? It's just crazy the way it is and it's a sign of power. They want to show power. A castle, it's massive. You've got bars on the windows. That one's got a balcony. They have so much money, they, they just don't know where to spend that money. Watch it, watch it, stop it. Put it down, put it down. Let me just go out, let me just go out and talk to them. You can't go far around here without being noticed. Buenas. Somos de televisión. Sí, yo sé. ¿Cuál es un punto en particular aquí? Yo me tengo mucho de problemas. They just don't want us to keep filming here because they look very aggressive. The reason the Mexican cartels have become the richest in the world is geography. Mexico is the last stop for almost all the drugs from Latin America. And the United States, the world's largest consumer, is right next door. The big money in the drugs world isn't from producing, but from smuggling. And the Sinaloan cartel single-handedly smuggle half of all the heroin and cocaine consumed in the US. They've agreed to reveal one of their simplest methods of trafficking and one of the hardest to stop. We've been directed to a garage on the edge of town. Buenas noches, uh, Foxy. Felipe. Felipe, very nice to meet you. Okay, what, what sort of stuff are we looking at? What, we, what, we, what are you going to impact tonight? Los bultos que vienen. Okay, so uh, what's this we've got here? Salen 49,000 dólares, la chiva, y el perco 23,000 dólares. Can I have a look? That's quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of gear there, to be honest. Uh, it'll be interesting to see where they're going to pack it. 
se, se preparó aquí para, para bajarlas, para empezar a meterlas, se, se quitó las pistas para meter las, los bultos, los paquetes. Felipe, ¿qué about did you learn these skills? Conforme la práctica pues estaba aprendiendo. Pretty good job. But yeah, it looks, looks really good. <laughs> He's squared it right away. Wouldn't know it had been touched. <sighs> so that's uh, $49,000 in heroin, $23,000 in cocaine, all packed in 10 minutes. Which was gracias. This car will now be driven 600 miles north to the border with the US. Drugs triple in price as soon as they cross it. At this checkpoint alone, 10,000 vehicles pass through each day, an impossible number to search properly. I bet right now someone here is loaded with drugs. There's, I mean, there's about a good hundred cars here. Chances are they'll probably get it through. I mean, how thoroughly can you check? What, maybe 150 cars? Hello. Hello. All right. There you go. That's it. We're through. We are in America. Control of the trafficking routes is the foundation of the cartel business. But to achieve it has required industrializing, violence and murder. I'm on my way to a Texan prison to learn how the cartels force their members to become ruthless killers. I'm meeting a former hitman who has confessed to over 30 murders. Now serving a 70 year sentence he's agreed to talk about the secretive training camps where he learned to kill. Hey, how's it going? Um, doing all right, sir. You all right? Jason. He was just a child when he became involved in the cartel. So during the time that you were, you were doing the job you were doing, did, did your family know what was going on? Did they know what you were involved with? I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they were suspicious of what was going on because, I mean, you got a 13, 14 year old riding around in a $100,000 car. <laughs> you, you see him all the time with money, the latest fashion. You know something's going on. The first time I killed someone was in, was I was 26, 27. Sounds about right, yeah, 26, 27. And that was in a gunfight, that was in the middle of a gunfight and I remember it very well, obviously. What about, what, you know, when was the first time for you and how, how did it happen? I was. Going on 13 years old, the first time I took a life. It's just one day, I mean, got him, got invited to Mexico. I didn't know what was going on at first. And I see about six people kneeling down. Then the, the individual, the person in charge, they start laughing and uh, I think they, they saw that, that scared, panicked look in my face and asked me if I had ever killed somebody. And uh, I said I had knowing that I, I had never took nobody's life, so he pulled out a handgun, told me to kill that person, the one kneeling in front of him. And uh, I just shot him. And uh, he said he was putting me on his payroll. He said, don't worry about it. Go back to school, to wherever you're doing and uh, I'm gonna call you when I need you. Two weeks later, call me back to Mexico. But I, I, I had been built up and trained and ready to probably see some shit things. For you, it was like that. You guys train, show you how to shoot, how to do everything. Yeah. Well, 
the training I received, it's, it's almost all the same. But you don't practice with paper targets. It's, it's a constant war zone. Mm -hmm. You practice with life targets. I mean, I know it sounds harsh saying it this way, but it's just the way it is. The people we were using as targets were rival cartel members. There used to be uh, 50, 60, sometimes over 100 people, just like cattle for the slaughterhouse. And um, there was scenarios that they, there's a house. They throw them in there. They tell them, look, man, if you can make it out of here alive, we'll give you your freedom. So these people, they're fighting for their lives. They throw you in there. Sometimes um, it's, to them it's more, uh, you, you, you'll give a knife to a person on a situation like that, and you'll be surprised at what a person can do with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you go in there and try to take him out, and he's gonna try to take you out. Only one person is coming out of there alive. Did you have to t torture people in, in those training camps or, or actually out on the ground? I, I didn't, I, honestly, I, I, I didn't like that job, especially when it gets so, so bloody. But I, I, I've done it before. Yes, I have. I mean, I, I've done the simple stuff that everybody starts doing, uh, pulling teeth out, cutting fingers up slowly, or start cooking them alive. You know, it's just little stuff that They'll get him to talk in a certain way. I mean, not. Do you think you embraced it? Do you, do you think you enjoyed what you did? I didn't enjoy it. But um, I tried to be the best at what I was doing. Mm -hmm. if, if I knew that I was going to survive in this life, this lifestyle, this world, I had to be the best. cartels still continue to produce a steady stream of killers from their horrific training camps. Which is why drugs violence in Mexico has claimed more than 200,000 lives, more even than the war in Afghanistan. I'm heading back across the border to a city overrun by killers like Wolfboy. Right now, it has the second highest murder rate on earth. Acapulco. In its 60s heyday, it was the go-to place for Hollywood stars. And until recently, hundreds of thousands of tourists flocked here from around the world. But today, its hotels are largely empty. Unlike Culiacan, where a single cartel is in charge, here, more than 20 cartels are battling for control. The police have been forced to travel in huge numbers on operations. Right now, we're following a tip-off about a cartel safe house. We've got quite a big force here. I mean, there's three, four, four pickups. We're one of them. There's a, whoa, 20 outriders, and then you've got uh, an army backup a bit further back that are sort of a little bit more, they're like the heavy protection if it does massively kick off, apparently. The toll booths for the, um, the tunnel and each, each cop has got to individually pay to get through. <laughs> I thought they might have a bit of a, 
bit of autonomy. We've got some guys that have just jumped off, they've debussed. I mean, you'd be foolish to take on this many guys, to be fair. Well, they've just done a room entry, so there's like a, I can't even see how many people there were. It was like six, six to eight guys. So they've gone in now. They went in stacked up with their hands on each other's shoulders so they can basically communicate to each other without talking just by touching each other. It turns out the occupants have already fled. With cartel lookouts across the city, it's hard to take the narcos by surprise. What's this mean? Uh, is the holy that? Is the it's a saint that many many uh, criminals use uh. to pray? For all their show of force the police are outnumbered and outgunned by the narcos. And one man who knows this only too well is Hector Ramirez, a crime scene investigator. Hola, Hola. Maxi. Bienvenido. Hey, how's it going? You all right? These are the offices of the fiscal, our offices of periciales and CEMEFO. Pues, bienvenido. Yeah, let's go. Del 2006, cuando había un muerto en Acapulco por arma de fuego, wow, era la novedad. De ahí evoluciona y después de hacer los pedacitos, abren del esternón este hueso, sacan todos los órganos y vísceras y forman letras. How often are the killers caught? No tan seguidos que pues están matando entre ellos mismos. Supongamos, yo hace un año maté a cinco o a veinte, en este año ya me mataron. Y todos esos homicidios pues quedan impunes porque ya no saben quién los cometió. Busy. Sí. You could almost never go home. No. <laughs> Debo seis meses que no voy a ver a mi mamá. No idea. Do you enjoy your job? Sí, amo mi trabajo. Let's go. Hector has just got a call about another cartel murder. The body's been left in a public place as a gruesome warning. What information have you got about this body? Eh, aquí se reportan dando datos un poquito más específico que hay un cuerpo que está de, eh, desmembrado y está tirado en la calle. El lugar es ahí enfrente. <coughs> eh, sí. He's, off, he's had his head and his arm, both arms cut off. But there's a bag or something, and then there's a fucking torso with a bag wrapped around its waist, so you can just see where his arms and his head have been chopped off. This has actually been done by people that mean some fucking serious business. It's pretty gruesome. Suddenly, a policeman shouts we're coming under attack. Thank you. Hang on. Mate, I wouldn't get behind the, get, get down around here. If you're going to get down anyway, get down behind here. Go, go. Oh wait, if anything comes from up there, this clear beer, because there's a wall there, all right? Is it a car accident? It's a car accident. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. Yeah, but see how everyone gets fucking high. I know, yeah. 
that's, that's, that's something in itself. A car accident and all the cops go mad because there's already been a fucking murder, which means it obviously goes off a lot around these sort of things. It could, it could also be a come on. These can be come ons. We have things called come ons where there is a car accident or there's something that arouses suspicion. It draws people in and then just on the peripheries where no one's actually looking, something else fucking happens. Someone ambushes you, someone kills someone else, so they get what they want. But basically, the best bit of cover was <laughs> the best bit of cover was probably right near the body if rounds were coming from over there. The police returned to the corpse to look for missing body parts. Here we go. The first thing to come out of the other bag was his head. They've rolled that into a position so they can take photographs. They've got two arms. So that's a that's a pretty big message, I'd say. Is a lot, that takes a lot. Of there's a lot of time and effort gone into that. Horrors like this are now a daily event here, and life quickly gets back to normal. Hector had just 30 minutes to investigate the crime scene before the area was reopened to the public. Okay. Can you tell me a bit about what, what actually happened there, what, what, how it all came about and the cause of death? Hasta ahorita los elementos que te puedo decir solamente que es un cuerpo completo que está seccionado, desmembrado de la extremidad cefálica, de los miembros superiores y miembros inferiores. Nada más, ahorita voy a llegar a Semefo y voy a revisar los cortes para establecer por qué tipo de objeto fue producido. Did you see any gunshot wounds? No, vi más que nada cortadas, pero no te puedo precisar ahorita si son cortantes o corto contusa. Por eso las voy a revisar ahorita en Semefo ya que lave el cuerpo con el agua los detalles de cada cortada. I mean, that was a, that was quite a gruesome scene to to have dumped in the middle of a city actually it's not you know it's not every day back where i come from that happens i thought i'd seen it all in my time in the special forces but this rivals anything i've encountered on the battlefield this violent it's like uber extreme violence the thought behind it is more gruesome than war because obviously you know there's body parts, people getting blown apart at war. Here, it doesn't need to happen, but it happens because people have set out with that mindset to do that to an individual to make a statement. So it's almost a lot darker, it's way darker. People talk about hope and how we can stop the violence, but they've got hundreds of Marines, hundreds of Army, hundreds of Federal Police, hundreds of mun Municipal Police, and they're a long way off from squaring this shit away. And from what I've seen, Mexico won't be winning the war on drugs anytime soon. How would you use the pistol? How can you show me how you would use it? Mira, in my mundo, in la mafia, un asesino profesional siempre dispara de aquí para arriba. De aquí para abajo no se hace. Así y así. Dos tiros nomás. I'm Jason Fox. I spent 10 years in the Special Forces, where I hunted down drug lords in Afghanistan. Yeah, these are good. This is what we used. Now I'm going to Latin America. Hola. The dark heart of the global drugs trade. Going into the barrio now. One of them's got a shooter. This time, I'll be travelling unarmed. To try to understand them from the inside. Starting in Mexico, I'll make contact with the feared cartels, more powerful than the state. In Peru, I'll meet the producers at the bottom of the supply chain. Con eso, educamos a nuestros hijos. And in Colombia, I see how the legacy of Pablo Escobar still runs deep. 
Para nosotros no era un patrón, era un dios. This is a world where violence is a way of life. Yo he matado en mi propia mano unas 257 personas. Pues si ustedes la cagan, hacen una cosa mal, pues sería ya cosa que ustedes la cagan. And the criminals are the ones in charge. If we were here without your permission, what would you do with us? Gringo o gabacho. I'm in Colombia, continuing my journey across Latin America. This is where the global narcotics industry began. More dollars have been spent defeating the drug barons here than anywhere else in this region. Yet Colombia remains one of the biggest traffickers of cocaine on the planet. I want to find out how the cartels managed to ship such vast quantities of the drug to more countries on earth than any other producer. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Oliver, your fixer. Yes. Yeah, nice to meet you. How's it going? So, Foxy, yeah. I hope you will have a, an exciting trip down here in Colombia. <laughs> I'm sure we will, yeah. <laughs> Oliver is a local journalist who moved here from Germany 20 years ago. Ah, We're leaving Cali and driving 70 miles west to the Pacific coast. Our destination is the biggest port in Colombia, Buenaventura. Almost half the cocaine that comes out of Colombia is smuggled through here and then shipped across the world. So how, uh, just how dangerous is Buenaventura? Well, the city has been for most, uh, for more than 10 years, one of the most dangerous places in, in, in Colombia. Um, I would think, uh, I would say there are almost people being killed uh, every couple of days at, at least. Um, so there is still an ongoing war between different drug cartels trying to, um, to gain control over, over the city, over the neighborhoods and barriers um, from where they get access to, to the ocean. After four hours, we reach the outskirts of the city. So those are the barriers on the left side. Yeah. Buenaventura has many slums. People live in these rickety wooden stilt houses perched above the water. But right next door, is the international multi-billion pound port complex. Somehow, the cartels managed to get their drugs from the barrios onto these huge container ships. We turn to the left, the next one, please. Where, this where, there, This, that, this that. one, yeah. Just follow those. Oliver has arranged for us to stay inside the port area. It is surrounded by armed guards. Looks quite fancy, doesn't it? Boom. Oh, it's all right. Considering the place outside is very deceiving. Wasn't expecting this, considering what we've just driven through. Next morning, I want to see how the smuggling operation works. But this means heading into the barrios. These are no-go areas for outsiders. Let's go, come on. Buenaventura has been described as a national shame. The cartels regularly use torture, dismemberment and murder to control those living here. Esta semana en la bahía de Buenaventura continuaron los hallazgos de restos humanos desmembrados. 
brazos, piernas, troncos. Solo aparece el tronco sin cabeza y sin extremidades. Y digamos eh, a esas personas casi digamos las pican vivas. Exposed to such extreme violence every day, I want to get a sense of how ordinary people manage to survive. We're meeting someone who's lived here all of his life. Okay, I can see him. It's the guy over there on the right side. Oh, right, in the brown T-shirt. Yeah. yeah, in the brown T-shirt. Javi, Foxy. Oh yeah, mucho gusto. J A B I, Javi. Javi. Yeah, Javi. <laughs> What's this barrio like? Este barrio es un barrio que está un poquitico eh, abandonado por el Estado, ¿no? Un barrio que ha sido muy golpeado por por los actos de violencia, ¿no? Dile que que baje la. We have to take down the camera, please. please. He says we can't be filming here. It's yes. too dangerous, please. Yes. Muchas gracias. Okay. Aquí, aquí es. Javi is taking us to the street where he lives, in Kennedy Barrio. It's safer to film here. He spends much of his time trying to stop kids from joining the gangs. El día a día la gente se rebusca eh, propuestas indecentes para que la gente, eh, los hombres terminen siendo eh, delincuentes y las mujeres eh, prostitutas. And, and, that, and then that's why they get involved with the cartels and the gangs. Sí, claro. Eh, no se apoya a la gente que quiere salir adelante, ¿no? ¿Entiendes? O sea, es lo que la gente quiere vernos eh, mal para poder dominarnos, ¿no? Tú sabes, cuando el pueblo está mal, la gente es más fácil de, de que nos dominen, los controles. This is Pucci, a friend of Javi's. Yeah. Mi nombre es Foxy. Oh, Pucci Black. Este es el gueto, este es mi gueto, el gueto. Come on, come on. All right. He's a former gang member turned singer and musician. Pucci. All right. Oh, muchas gracias. Can we listen to some of their music? Can we listen to some of Pucci's music? Claro, claro, dice. Eh, en el nombre del Padre, el Espíritu y el Hijo Que Dios bendiga a los muertos y a los que están vivos A los que siempre me han tirado y a los que están conmigo Mis padres, mis hermanos, todos mis amigos Bendiciones, porque son de corazón El Pucho y Blas, por eso me apodan el león Líbrame por favor, Dios mío Yo te lo pido, te lo ruego, te lo imploro No nos dejes solo No nos dejes solo <risa> Yeah, yeah, Good effort, man. Boom. Yeah, Pucci, are you able to talk to me about what sort of work you did for the gangs and the cartels in the drugs industry? In my barrio, more than all, in my barrio, we are in charge of selling drugs, selling marijuana, selling cocaine. You understand how it is? We went to the stores, to the supermarkets, to pay the taxes. How, how difficult is it for young people living in the barrios to not get drawn into the violence of the gangs and the cartels and, and the drug industry as a whole? Pues, cuán difícil no creo, cuán fácil es, porque es que todos los jóvenes hoy en día acá en esta ciudad más que y en este barrio más que todo, todos piensan en, en, en la vida fácil, la verdad, la verdad. Es correcto, es una moda. Es una moda, anda con pistola, anda con buena chica, anda fumando ayer bien moto, te luego. Una moda. The gangster culture is cool. Claro, porque es que, mira, un joven que aquí en Buenaventura, aquí en Buenaventura, eh, trabaja todo un mes, todo un mes, le van a por un mes, tirando pala, asoleándose, le van a por un mes 600 mil pesos, 500 mil, y que tú en un solo día te ganes 700, ¿me está entendiendo? Lo que haces en un mes te lo ganas en un día. If you hadn't got involved in the music project with Javi, where would you have been now in the sort of cartels, the gangs and the drugs trade? <laughs> As night falls, Oliver gets word that a cocaine smuggler has agreed to meet me. 
under the cover of darkness, he's going to traffic 100 kilos out of the barrio and onto a container ship. If this load reaches the UK, it will be worth a staggering 10 million pounds. And the next phase in this little bit is uh, ditching the cars and then we're going to be going on foot for approximately two to five minutes down the walkway where uh, we're going to meet the guy, the smuggler. Watch your camera, mate. So we get off here. Okay. Cars will stay here at the end of the cemetery. Yeah. And then it's down that road, is it? Yeah, on the left side. Cheers, bro. Okay, good luck, man. You. Yeah. A couple of the smugglers' men are taking us in. He says we need to, to buy something so people wouldn't be thinking something about us. So just go to a shop, buy something. The barrio has become too dangerous for the police to enter. And the drug gangs have lookouts everywhere. Nothing happens here without them knowing. This is the house being used by the smuggler. We're just waiting for the dark hours to come in. We could have done with the timing being a little bit better, so we just got here and it was good to go. We don't want to arouse too much suspicion. It is really sketchy here. Just the, like, guy, the guy's over there. Yeah. Like, the longer we're standing around. We've only just arrived, and we've already been spotted by a group of young men. Everyone's on edge, and the only way out is back past them or to swim for it. I wouldn't stay here too long. We've, we've already... Because basically, unless you want to get wet, that's the only fucking way out, and they're all fucking sat, stood there. The drug smuggler wants us to call him Pedro. He's waiting for a call from his boss. The cartel have to line up everyone else involved before they can move the drugs. Pedro, um, can you just let us know what's going on at the moment? Estoy esperando una una llamada del jefe para hacer una entrega. Estoy esperando que me dé las las coordenadas para hacer la entrega hoy esta noche. Are you able to tell us which cartel that you're you're working for? Esa información es peligrosa. But how how do they contact you and let you know that tonight is the night that you're going to set off with the 100 kilos? Ellos me avisan unas horas antes. Y cuando ya tienen todo cuadrado con los con la ley, como vemos los del agua, hombre, los los guardacostas, ellos proceden. Que ya tienen todo cuadrado con los guardacostas y con los de muelle. Entonces, cuando ellos ellos tienen una hora exacta para para llamarlo a uno y decirle, le dan como 15 minutos para que usted llegue allá. I think that's the call. Could be the call. Hello. Sí, 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 sí. Ya. Sí. Ajá. Sí. Cinco minutos, me toca arrancar. Okay, Pedro, what about what, what you're going to be doing in five minutes? Me toca llevar la carga al punto. Hay un punto donde están esperando. Pero, pero entonces se la troca ahora. Está en la casa le daña, en la casa le daña. Aquí. Can I come with you, mate? No, oye, se nos matan. Si quiere vean cuando va a salir. With Pedro heading off. We need to leave here as quickly as possible. Right, mate, where's... where's, where's there's someone coming over there. Right, there's someone coming over. Get rid of that now. Right, should we go? Yeah, should we... Let's go, mate. Yeah, let's go. Our route back is through the barrio. Shit. <laughs> We were getting a fucking shitload of uh, attention from young guys, guys that were just hanging on the street corners, hanging outside some of the casas, which was uh, unnerving. Then Pedro got the call and he had to go to another casa. He's probably now en route, if not there, picking up the, the, the cocaine and, and heading on his merry way to drop it off.
Colombian cartels are experts in the industrial exportation of drugs. Nearly half of all the cocaine that comes out of the country is smuggled out of this port area. We've heard that last night, Pedro successfully offloaded the 100 kilos of cocaine onto a container ship. All under the noses of the authorities and the shipping companies. We've arranged to meet him in the mangroves surrounding the port to find out how he did it. If you look over there in the mangroves, quite close to the port, you've just got to see, see how the water it goes in. It's like little tributaries and little bays that just indent into the mangrove, though it's perfect if you're getting chased or you need somewhere to hide, that's it. You're in there and you're gone and no one's ever going to find you. To police coastline here is just, it, it is nigh on impossible. Oh. Pedro. Hi. There he is. Buenos dias. Whoa, 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 whoa. You can T-bone the poor bloke. <sighs> So, um, Pedro, can you explain where it was you went and what sort of procedures you had to carry out to get pick it up and then move it? Buscamos un lugar más más seguro, más neutro, porque hay mucha gente mirando y y uno no sabe quién puede ser informante. Está un poquito nervioso por la situación y por lo que usted sabe el riesgo que uno corre. Por eso estos trabajos se tienen que hacer rápido, porque en cualquier momento te llega la ley o te llega un grupo armado y en el acto nos mataban. Let's go. Vámonos. Pedro's going to show me the route he took in his canoe to smuggle the cocaine onto a container ship. OK, so we've just come up through the mangroves. And uh, it looks like we're now approaching where the docks are. You can see all the containers and the cranes. With all the hustle and bustle and how busy it is, it would be so easy just to just canoe up with your load get it lifted up on the opposite side onto any one of these ships and that's it offloaded and good to go. En noches anteriores recibí la llamada de mi patrón, me ubiqué en un punto estratégico. Aquí había un barco en el cual subí una mercancía. So the ship the shipping was here. En el muelle, aquí en el muelle. Yeah, yeah. En el muelle de contenedores. No un trabajo fácil, pero se va haciendo. And do they poco a poco. Ah, uh, so it's pulling it up. Sí. Sí. Me pasaron un gancho, amarré la mercancía y la subieron al barco. En un barco grande. Salió esta mañana, todo cronometrado, en un tiempo perfecto. You'd never think that a small canoe would rendezvous with a huge ocean-going tanker. You'd think there'd be something in between. It makes perfect sense. The small canoe with the, without an engine is almost impossible to detect at night. And the, this is the perfect place to do it. It's a busy port. All that anyone's interested in is happening on the other side of the ship because of health and safety, the lights and the noise. Everything's focused on people not dying on the other side when actually what everyone's interested, it should be interested in, is the fact that 100 kilograms of cocaine has just been hauled up the side of a massive ocean-going vessel. This port is the most valuable smuggling route out of Colombia. But it's the barrios where all the planning and logistics take place. The cartels run them with an iron grip, using hitmen known as sicarios who have grown up on the streets here. Oh, we should, so, sorry, we should go left here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so now please turn to the right. Yeah. Oliver has arranged for us to meet one at a petrol station not far from the port. What time did he say he'd be here? Um, 5.30, supposed to be here at 5.30. No, <sighs> he's hit me in the 
I think that's our guy. Hey, my nobody is Foxy. The hitman wants us to call him Pepe. He's going to show me how he carried out one of his many hits. Off on the uh, route of the hit. Mm -hmm. Crazy Buonaventura. <laughs> Okay, so we're going into the barrio now and into where it gets a little bit sketchier. Less movement going on, less people cutting around. Keep our wits about us now as we're getting further in. Don't think we've got far to go now before we get to the place where um, old Pepe conducted the hit. So is this it? Sí, o sea, allá en la esquina yeah. fue una de las partes que yo maté uno de los tipos. Así, la misión fue así mismo con la, en la moto. ¿Me entiendes? Yo venía en la moto atrás, pam, 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 yo me bajé, lo quebré. De ahí salió otra vez en la moto, directo por ahí. How many bullets? Cinco, five, five, cinco veces. Five, sí, five. Sí, sí, cinco veces, sí. Sí, sí, cinco veces. Make sure, to make yeah, sure. Eso. That's where it was, right there on the corner, underneath the sign. Ahorita esto está muy peligroso, tenemos que salir ya de aquí. Yeah, yeah. yeah sí, let's get the fuck yeah. out of it. Pepe grew up in the barrios. He lives alongside the people the cartel order him to kill. Can you tell me about the last time that you were actually contracted to go and do a hit? La última vez fue por con una, por una señora, una señora que debía una plata y estaba tequeando mucho para pagarla. Entonces ahí sí fue orden, bueno, le cobran la plata, apenas pague la plata, la matan, pero eso sí fue orden de, del cartel. When I've had to do my job and I've ended up killing people, sometimes it's been in front of uh, maybe family members, children, and that is the, the thing that has bothered me, and it's some, something that I've lost sleep over in the past. Uh, I was wondering if you've ever had the same situation where you've had to kill someone in front of family members and how you feel about that. Sí, hay, 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 hay una situación similar. Exactamente. Hay una persona que pasa por donde yo vivo. Y a esa persona le matamos a mi papá. Y el pelado sabe. Pero, o sea, me duele y me, y me habla. Porque me habla. Eh, ¿Cómo ve? ¿Cómo ve? ¿Cómo ve, Pepe? ¿Cómo ve? Tan, tan me habla, pero me duele. Cuando, cada vez que lo veo, en el momentico sí siento como... Chuta, mano, este pelado. Bacano. Uno ni se fija quién chiquitico está por ahí llorando, quién no. no uno la prende. Pero eso, obviamente, es just what pasa cuando... Es el trabajo que you, either you chose o you had to do, y eso es lo que tienes que lidiar con, I suppose. ¿Do you go from a hit straight back home, straight into normal life, or do you go somewhere to maybe take a bit of time and chill out? I don't go directly to my house. I go to another house. And when I go to my house, the thing is in the night, I go to another day. If the thing is in the night, I go to the night and the night and the night. About 12, 13, 14, 15 hours. In another place, but I don't go to my house. Do you think that because of the job you've got, do you feel that you can lead a normal life, or do you think it doesn't quite work? No tener un hogar, o sea, estar con mi familia, haber criado alguno o o mis hijos o todos mis hijos. Eso es lo extraño. Eso es lo que más extraño de esta de 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 este trabajo, porque como te digo, no vive uno la vida normal. Uno no duerme tampoco ni tranquilo. You're doing this job, and it makes you feel like this, and you miss lots of things. Why, why do you do it? Porque la verdad que pues, si me retiro y me quedo aquí en Buenaventura, puedo perder. Puedo perder porque piensan que me voy a meter a otro combo, que voy a hacer a traicionar la, la empresa. Pepe must kill when ordered or be killed. He's trapped in a relentless spiral of violence like the many victims he preys on. Apparently, 
the going rate for a Pepe hit is $800. I mean, if you look at this area, that's probably quite a lot of money, but then in the grand scheme of things, is that how much a life's worth? But then it also shows you how much power the gangs and the cartels around here have due to the fact that they, they are able to dictate the price of a life. The authorities seem powerless in their fight to control the drugs trade. Of the total amount of cocaine smuggled across the world last year, a quarter of it came through this port area. I want to see how the Colombian Navy are trying to stop the traffickers. It looks like we're going to be um, stop, stopping this boat here to give, to give it a random check and make sure it's not carrying any drugs. So you've got the two guys at the front with weapons, so they're going to offer protection as they go on, and they're going to obviously board. It's only a small boat, so it only needs two of them, so you can probably just have two guys jump on the boat, and then you'll have a bit of protection from the back. They might have a few more blokes get on board. Empty beer bottles. They're fucking pissed. The amount of empty beer bottles in the fucking boat. So you've got one bloke's checking the um, documents, making sure that the boat is legit and that it's, it's owned by these guys. And then you've got a guy there that's starting to rummage through the cargo. It looks like it's just a weekly visit to the bottle bank by the looks of it. <laughs> There isn't a set boat that they're looking for. It can be any boat. We've seen, I mean, we've seen lots of different boats cutting around the, the bay. You've got a canoe over there. You've got sort of slightly bigger boats than the canoe there. You can have go fast. You can have boats that are not dissimilar to this. It's, it's, there's a mixed array. The, the traffic coming in and out of Bonaventura in this bay is, is, there's a lot of it. And there's just one of them at the moment out here bobbing about. Just down the coast from the port is the Malaga Navy base. I'm meeting the commander, Captain Lemaitre. Hey, how's it going? How nice are to you? meet you. Yeah, I'm good, thank nice you. How's it going? You. Nice to meet you too, yeah. He's going to show me an extraordinary method the cartels now use to traffic their drugs. They build their own submarines. I'm intrigued to know what it's like inside. It has an engine room, mm. as you see. It has to have a cockpit. It's not comfortable, as it's very hard to be on it. There are always four people in, inside of it. There's a couple of engines guy. There's the one that drives it and the one that owns the, the, the cocaine. It always over there is, yeah. is watching of, of what are you going to do with the cocaine. It can't be nice inside them. I've been, I've been in a proper submarines and they're not comfortable at the best of times. These must be horrendous. Yes, yes. In terms of, of heat, in terms of humidity, mm. uh, what they breathe is very hard. How long are the journeys that they're doing normally? Three days, four days inside of these kind of ships, these kind of artifacts. Can't be too safe either. It, yes, it is, it is a big risk. It's worth a lot of, of, of guts to go and, and come inside of these things. You know, you're going to go out, you don't know if you're going to come back. Mm. It, it is very hard. I, I wonder where they make them, you know. They made it inside the jungle. Everything, everyone. Even mm. though that one is the, big, the biggest one that we have. You've got to admit, it's quite clever. Yes, uh, yes. I mean, can we have a look in any of them? Let's, let's see if we can, we can go inside the last one over there. It's a slippery over here, I tried yeah, yeah. it. You tried this one? <laughs> yes. Let's have a go. It's a hot. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Tell me if there is a, oh, there's a it's chain. It is hot, yeah. It, it's chained it up. Closed? It's locked. Is it locked? Yeah. It looks stinking in there. They've even got like the toughened glass, you know. It's, I mean, it's, it's amazing, because if you think about how we make submarines back home, there's like big docks, dry docks. It's, it's, you know, there's hundreds of engineers and scientists and they're all building it. 
and yet they managed to build this in the middle of the jungle. I mean, are you impressed with their ingenuity? Yes, yes. Yeah, it's hard it's, not to be impressed. Yeah, it's, it's, it's something that we, we wonder uh, how come they can, they can do these things for bad <laughs> matters. Otherwise, we could have some very uh, innovations for, 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 the, for the good. Yeah. This coastline around Bonaventura has become a breeding ground of narco innovation over the years. But it was one drug lord in particular who first pioneered ingenious ways to traffic vast quantities of drugs. Colombia's number one enemy at this moment is the terrorist Pablo Escobar, whose criminal organization... Cocaine kingpin Pablo Escobar is still at large. He escaped from a prison near Medellin yesterday. Pablo Escobar single-handedly transformed the drugs business into a global industry. With Pablo Escobar came the birth of the modern-day drug trafficker. Um, gangster and hitman all rolled into one, really. He turned Colombia into a globally known cocaine state, I suppose, and it's, it's kept that reputation. It hasn't got rid of it. I doubt it will get rid of it for a long time. I'm heading north to the town of Medellin. From here, Escobar built an empire that controlled most of the world's cocaine supply. I want to meet one of the men that helped him do it. In the 80s, Medellin was reported to be the most dangerous city on earth. Escobar's cartel gave rise to the modern global drugs industry. They controlled 80% of the cocaine supply to the US. <laughs> I want to see how Pablo Escobar is regarded today. I've come to a barrio that he turned into a fortress against the police. It provided a safe haven for his cartel members to hide out and operate in. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. ¿Están juiciosos o no, parcero? Chacho, ¿qué más, parcero? The man showing me around was a close friend of Pablo Escobar. Popeye, here on the right with Escobar, helped build the Medellin cartel into the most powerful drugs organisation in the world. He was recently released from prison after serving 23 years. Foxy son laberintos. Aquí yeah. la policía se atrevía en la guerra, no eran capaces de entrar acá. Solo entraban fuerzas especiales. Chao, Toto. Cero. Permiso. Va mi viejo. Yo estoy descansando. Más linda, ¿cómo está? Why is it that you're such a celebrity around this this barrio? La gente acá es muy amable. Aquí hay mucho cariño, hay mucha sinceridad. La gente es buena. En épocas pasadas estábamos en estos barrios de forma violenta. Ahora venimos con amor. De aquí, aquí la gente conoce la violencia y por eso viven en paz. So, Popeye, what is it that you did do for these people in the barrio? Mira, aquí la gente... Marcelo, más, ¿todo bien? ¿Cómo vas? ¿Qué dicen? Señora, ¿todo bien? Marcelo, señora, gracias. Mira, Pablo Escobar era un hombre que amaba a los pobres. Pablo Escobar regaló barrios completos. Pablo Escobar ayudaba, hacía centros de salud, daba mercaditos, daba los regalos en Navidad. Y los jóvenes de, de hoy en día no les tocó eso los que estaban en este barrio, pero recuerdan que a sus abuelos fueron ayudados, sus padres, entonces son muy agradecidos con Pablo Escobar. Y aquí se respeta a Pablo Escobar por lo que siempre apoyó estos barrios. Today, this barrio is still a dangerous place, with drugs and violence a regular part of daily life. Señora, ¿cómo está? ¿Cómo le ha ido? ¿Cómo va con el dolor? Mira, este es un chico. Oh. Joven, que murió violentamente. Un hombre joven, amable, era mi amigo. ¿Qué pasó? ¿Qué pasó, bebé? Ah, ¿qué pasó, cara ratón? Ah, mire, un amigo, un hermano británico. Sandra. ¿Cómo está? 
Ella es hermana del chico que murió. Vale, que en estos Yo días, en estos días vengo. Bueno, muchas gracias. It's clear Escobar has left a lasting impact here. But of all the narcos I've met on my travels so far, no one has perpetrated more violence and horror than Popeye. And on Escobar's most wanted poster, you don't have to look very far to find him. Popeye carried out this assassination of a presidential candidate. He killed judges, police, innocent bystanders, all on the command of Pablo Escobar. Popeye, the families of the victims, they must be sickened to see you treated like a celebrity. Yo ya pagué 23 años, 3 meses de cárcel por mis delitos. Estuve en un calabozo, fue una cárcel muy dura. Las familias de las víctimas saben esto. Ya el, 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 el capítulo de la, de la violencia pasó y todo el mundo está cerrando heridas. Volver a hacer una venganza es volver a, 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 a levantar el monstruo de la guerra. Despite this, Popeye never likes to be out in the open for too long. So he's taken me back to his apartment. Sigue, mi hermano Foxy. Gracias. Mira, mi virgen, esta bandera de los Estados Unidos me la regaló un guerrero de la guerra de Irak. Soy un guerrero santo, pero no como los de Isis, que esos son unos miserables. Yo mato por una causa, no mato por la religión. Foxy. Popeye. Gracias. How many people did you kill to receive 23 years in prison? Mira, yo de mi propia mano, Foxy, por los procesos, porque yo no soy un psicópata. Yo no guardo prendas de las víctimas ni nada de eso. Yo lo mato y listo. Yo he matado de mi propia mano unas 257 personas. Y el más exitoso de todos fue la muerte de el doctor Luis Carlos Galán, que era candidato a la presidencia de la República de Colombia. You still have to believe. You have to believe what you're doing is right, and you obviously have to somehow sell to yourself what you're doing is the right thing. Nuestras posiciones son diferentes, porque somos dos asesinos. Pero tú eres un asesino legal, un asesino con la Constitución. Tú matas con la Constitución en la mano. Yo soy un asesino ilegal. Vamos por el amor a una organización y al crimen, y tú vas por el amor a un país. Did your family know what you did? Mira, inicialmente no sabían, pero cuando empecé a salir, te voy a mostrar Foxy, te muestro acá. Cuando empecé a salir en estos carteles de Se Busca, mi familia se enteró. Aquí está Pablo Escobar, aquí estoy yo. Las autoridades norteamericanas lo ponen a valer este dinero y este dinero es muy delicado, Foxy. Yo valía 100 millones de pesos, que era un millón de dólares en la época, hoy son 10 millones de dólares. How did you become a hitman? What, why? La sociedad me, me rodeó desde niño desde violencia, porque este ha sido un país violento desde hace 60 años. Acá, cuando tú rodeas un niño de violencia, de violencia intrafamiliar, el niño va a ser violento. How, how would you use the pistol? How, can you show me how you would use it? Mira, en mi mundo, en la mafia, un asesino profesional siempre dispara de aquí para arriba. De aquí para abajo no se hace. Así y así. Dos tiros nomás. El resto del proveedor para, la, para salir si sí hay reacción, para la bronca. Mira, Foxy, yo te quiero hacer una pregunta, por favor. ¿Cuántas personas has matado tú en tus guerras? So, uh, I never really counted how many people I killed. For me, um, for me, it was just part of a job to get something done, where I was employed by the military, like you said, you know, working for the Constitution. Uh, for me, it was actually just me protecting myself and the people around me doing a job that I did love doing. Esa es la guerra, Foxy. Cuando tú caminas por la calle, caminas con la frente en alto y nunca te serás llamado como asesino en tu, en tu hermosa ciudad. A mí me gritan asesino en las calles. Hay gente que se toma fotos conmigo, pero me gritan asesino. A ti nunca te gritarán asesino. Foxy, tú eres un héroe, yo soy un asesino. Pero también te quiero decir algo, Foxy. Te lo digo con toda la claridad. A mí me hubiera gustado ser un hombre como tú, con honor.
Popeye wasn't the only one who gave his undying loyalty to Pablo Escobar. Escobar saw how to use poor communities who felt abandoned by their government and put them to work for his own good. I've seen how in the barrios of Bonaventura, the narcos still prey on those who have no one else to turn to. When Escobar was finally shot dead by the police in 1993, 25,000 people attended his funeral. For many, it felt like a national day of mourning. When nighttime falls in Medellin, Popeye comes out to visit the grave of Pablo Escobar. Twenty-five years after his death, he still casts a spell over those who knew him. Foxy, te lo hace claro. Siempre estaré conectado a esta historia. Amo esta historia. Soy la memoria histórica del cartel de Medellín. Soy un hombre de Pablo Emilio Escobar Gaviria y seré un hombre de Pablo Emilio Escobar Gaviria. Pablo Escobar's legacy is a global drugs industry the world is powerless to stop. Cocaine is now consumed in every country on earth. It's become a business worth around $90 billion a year. It's all exactly the same as what I've seen in the past, but on a slightly smaller scale. In this type of scenario, I'd have probably been kicking that door in if we'd had the right intelligence and telling them to get on the floor. <laughs> now I'm best mates. <laughs> I'm Jason Fox. I spent 10 years in the Special Forces, where I hunted down drug lords in Afghanistan. Yeah, these are good. This is what we used. Now, I'm going to Latin America. Hola. The dark heart of the global drugs trade. Going into the barrio now. One of them's got a shooter. This time, I'll be traveling unarmed. In the car, in the car. Come on, yeah? To try to understand them yeah. from the inside. Starting in Mexico, I'll make contact with the feared cartels, more powerful than the state. In Peru, I'll meet the producers at the bottom of the supply chain. And in Colombia, I see how the legacy of Pablo Escobar still runs deep. This is a world where violence is a way of life. Yo he matado en mi propia mano unas 257 personas, así y así. Pues si ustedes la cagan hacen una cosa mal, pues sería ya cosa que ustedes la cagan. And the criminals are the ones in charge. If we were here without your permission, what would you do with us? Gringo o gabacho. I'm in Peru, on the final leg of my journey across Latin America. This is one of the world's biggest cocaine producers, much of which ends up in the UK. I want to see what life is like for those at the bottom of the supply chain, growing and processing the drug before the cartels traffic it around the world. Hi. Hey, mate, how's it going? How are you? I'm Luciano. Yeah, good. You nice to meet you, man. Yeah, you all right, mate? Welcome good to, to Peru. Luciano is a local journalist, and he's taken me to an area where almost all the cocaine in Peru comes from. The Vrame is a treacherous valley in the Andes Mountains. About the size of Ireland, the narcos have turned it into a lawless place. 
outsiders aren't welcome. So Luciano, I'm assuming that some of the threats to us could be uh, ambush, kidnap. The other main risk is um, when being with the narcos, if their competitors or their neighbors get to see us, uh, and if they call the whole population, the whole town, meaning having 40, 50 or 100 people around us, and that is going to be big troubles because yeah. they can kidnap and then they can apply what they call popular justice. So they decide what to do with us, basically. Communities here, they don't believe much on the government and you'll see why when we get there. But the danger isn't just from the drug gangs. The route into the valley takes us down some of the most perilous roads in the world. These mountains create a natural fortress for the cocaine producers. Looks like there might have been a landslide or something. No, no sé si pasamos, huh? Has there been a landslide, does it look like? ¿Qué pasó? the shittest place to break down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. This lump here, it looks like it's chiseled away anyway. If that goes and, and, it, and say the, the back of the vehicle's on it, one of the rear tires and it loses itself, then we're gonna end up falling down the fucking cliff, aren't we? But you know, this happens here all the time. It happened a week ago, a, 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 a truck like this with beer yeah. fell down. The problem is we've got to get down before we lose any more light. If it's dangerous during daytime, imagine how it would be at night. Yeah. <laughs> a bit, a bit more here. Yeah, watch out, Luis. Careful. OK, you can stop now. In the last 20 years, cocaine production in Peru has exploded. As America spent billions of dollars trying to shut down Pablo Escobar and the Colombian cartels, Peru stepped in and supplied the demand. The Vrame now single-handedly produces over 20 billion pounds worth of cocaine every year. That's more than the annual income of Facebook. After six hours, we're finally entering the valley. We're getting into Machente. This Machente. is a checkpoint for the police. Is this the only checkpoint in and out of the valley? Yes, this is the only one. Uh, and if you look, they usually check more the Ma cars that are going out. So this is pretty normal, you know. They look for almost every car that, that goes out. Huge amount of cocaine come, come out of Ryan. I mean, the guy there with the car, he looked quite thorough. Um, it's quite a heavily manned checkpoint. On the other side of this checkpoint live around half a million people. Most of them earn their living in some way from cocaine production. Where are we now? We're getting into San Francisco. This is, this is San Francisco. Yep. It's a lot different to the last time I went to a place called San Francisco. This is the bridge. This is like their Golden Gate Bridge. San Francisco is a narco stronghold in the valley. We're going to base ourselves here.
This is Hola. it. Hola. Buenas noches. Hotel looks good, mate. Thanks. I like the sofa. Takes me back to, to oh. staying at my nan's. But my nan's house doesn't have signs like this. No, no weapons allowed. Fortunately, I didn't bring one. <laughs> you don't even need a light on in it. <laughs> Bro, have you deliberately seen me off with the worst room? Take a look at the view. Considering its key role in the global drugs trade, San Francisco feels surprisingly poor. I've not seen any lavish homes or signs of wealth. Yet the town is completely surrounded by its chief export, the coca plant, the key ingredient in cocaine. Everywhere you look, there are massive plantations. The plant is legal to grow in Peru and is used in many traditional medicines. But processing the leaves to make cocaine is a crime. So the narcos hide their labs deep in the jungle. I want to see how so much cocaine gets out of the valley, despite military checkpoints and impassable roads. OK, so it's five to three in the morning. Uh, we're getting up, we're getting ready to uh, basically head off for about a 45, 50 minute drive. Uh, we've been instructed that we've got to wear all black, all this to just basically detract away the attention like going up into that area, it's really dangerous. Luciano has heard from a contact that tonight there will be a large shipment of cocaine being smuggled out. Moving the drugs is the most dangerous part of the operation. It's done by locals that know the terrain and who are willing to risk their lives. The amount of cocaine that these guys are carrying is enough to send them down for a long time. It's in the region of between one and three million pounds. Street value. Our driver is being guided to the meeting point by the smugglers, but they're worried we might be spotted by rival gangs. Anyone driving at night round here could be a threat. Okay, where are you guys? Okay. Let's go. Viene carro, viene Make sure you've got your kit and then we're fucking going. Yes, I'm going to We're told the traffickers are going to meet us at an abandoned shack. This is the place. This is the casa. This is the casa. Oh, you're going to go or no? You're going to go or no? There's some guys coming up now. And one of them's got a shooter. I don't trust that fucking shooter. Yeah, 
the man in charge tells us to call him Paco. He's a local cocaine chef who makes batches of the drug himself. Paco, how much have we got here? Put them in the short. 18 kg. If if he get, if you get caught with this, how many? And what is the sentence? Minimum of 10 years. Fuck it out. That's a big risk. Big risk. There's a kilogram brick right there. Uh, it's been wrapped up. I think this is his logo, trademark, I suppose. Tonight, these backpackers, known as Mochileros, will carry Paco's cocaine on foot through the jungle and out of the valley. Uh, how did you get into becoming a Mochilero? Uh, I was trying for my family, always for necessity. A veces hay, no hay un apoyo del gobierno y aquí estamos por, por, por situación de pobreza y por escaso por nuestra familia. A veces nos ganamos un poco de pan para nuestra familia. ¿Cómo te sientes familia feel about you doing this? No saben mi familia porque no quiero preocupar a mis hijos. ¿Qué piensas que haces? A veces que estoy haciendo trabajar así en la chacra, dicen los. And what, what else do you think you would like to do, if you could? Mm. And I'm, in, I'm interested in, is there a little bit of you that enjoys doing this? Do you, do you feel, get excitement from it sometimes? No. Not one bit? No, it's not easy, it's always. I'm not sure this work. Sometimes, many things, it's all. The job that I used to do has some fucking enormous risks, but I did actually enjoy it, and I got something out of it. Where the, and I thought there might be a little bit of that here. That's why I asked that question. But there isn't, and, unless he's unless he's deciding not to tell us. But I don't know. There's 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 just not one ounce of satisfaction in it at all. No adrenaline, just fear. They got some fish, normal food, snacks, some fluid to take on, but they've also, the, the interesting thing is they've got paracetamol just so they can tide themselves over if they get feverish on the way. Watch that fucking shooter. I don't trust that fucking shooter We're hanging around. This is us, here we go. Everyone ready, yeah? Let's go. The Mochileros now face a 60-mile trek over mountainous terrain. They've allowed me to walk with them for the first few. Tonight, hundreds of them will be making similar journeys. Their backpacks heading for clandestine airstrips all over the frame. We're actually passing through uh, coca plantations as well on the slopes here. Basically, the stuff's everywhere. If it's not in your backpack, it's bloody what you're walking through. Obviously, not in my backpack. Yeah, I've worked in the jungle quite a bit. As a rule, you don't normally move at night in the jungle because it's just too dark, too dangerous. You normally, hunker down, lie up for the night, get in your hammocks. And all the work that you do in the military in the jungle is done in the day. There are exceptions, and, I, and to be honest, these guys have no other option really, so circumstances dictated a night move. The ridge line is as far as I can go with them. Beyond it, the chances of being ambushed by rival gangs is too great. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. All this for just £150 each. Just a few miles from Paco's lab, the valley is celebrating the sacred traditions of the coca leaf. The communities in the Vrame have been dependent on the coca leaf for thousands of years. Cocaine is a relatively recent use. Mate, what's all this about? She's singing to coca leaf. 
not only to coca leaf but to everything that coca leaf represents. She's also singing about how coca leaf has been criminalized. Ah, uh, right, okay. And she's asking the authorities on this song to defend and protect the coca leaf. So they're basically honouring the coco leaf and all it stands for. They've used it for, especially to get more strength. You know, they shoot the coca leaf so they have more strength to work on their farms, on their crops. But they also made um, use the coca leaf for religion. So this is the message of this festival, that coca leaf is not a drug. There are many legal products on sale here that use the coca leaf teas to painkillers, it's even supposed to be a good cure for altitude sickness. It works! This is too late for me. Only one. What is it? Cocaine cookie? No, coca cookie. Coca cookie, that's what you know what I meant. Gracias. Cheers. Cheers to coca leaf. I wonder how uh, how it would be to be drunk with this beer. <coughs> you wanna find it out? <laughs> As the days pass, it seems the narcos have this region to themselves. There's little evidence of law enforcement. So I want to find out what it's like to police this valley. I'm heading to a base just outside San Francisco. Where that white car is, turn to the left. There is the entrance in here. Como está, amigo? Hola, mucho gusto. Coronel Juan Colmenares. Very nice to meet you. Jefe de la División de Operaciones Especiales Antidrogas Palmapampa del Bra en Ayacucho. Bienvenidos. Uh, just like to say thanks for having me. Thanks for having us along. I'm looking forward to spending some time with you guys and getting out on the ground as well. Encantado de tenerlos acá para poder mostrarles el trabajo que realiza el personal de la Policía Nacional del Perú por intermedio de la Dirección Antidrogas en esta zona del Braen. En este espacio, ah, yeah. para ponernos bien con Dios. Before ah, going out. Sí. Mm -hmm. Mi sala de armas. Armory. Sí. Munaya, señor Foxy. Hey, nice to meet you, right? En este caso, él es especialista en fuerzas especiales M4. de los ingleses. Yeah, these are good. This is what we used. Pretty comfortable with it. Is that misusing it, sort of? Glasses. G3? C3, yeah. Yeah. G3. Yeah, used these before. Used to use them from helicopters. Ah, uh, baton. Sí, yeah, con escopeta. Yeah, Eso yeah, decía, yeah, yeah. saca la escopeta, la múltiple. Yeah, a veces te mata. That's 40mm grenade. Because en una te mata. Looks like something else. Uh -huh. The colonel is keen to impress but many of his men are young and inexperienced. El efectivo de mi escuela ahorita está reducida a 10 efectivos con mi persona. Tuvimos el enfrentamiento que tuvimos con delincuentes terroristas. So they've all, they've, all, they've all fully recovered now and they're going to be coming back soon. Tenemos comunicación constante con ellos y ya nos han comunicado que ya los han dado de alta algunos de ellos y ya pronta recuperación. Una vez que se recuperen al 100%, estarán integrándose nuevamente a, a la escuadra para los operativos que vamos a seguir. Cool. Hemos, sabemos que ha sido ex miembro de las Fuerzas Especiales. Te invitamos de repente a hacer un, un pequeño pase por el circuito que hemos preparado. Oh. Yeah, go on in. How many have we got? How many? Twelve. Twelve, okay. Okay. Well, 
By the time I first saw active combat, I'd had nine years in the military. Most of these guys have only basic training and two months preparation for combat. He needs some dentures. Podemos apreciar, estos son los, los disparos del fusil. ¿no? Should have hit it from there anyway, but yeah. Y felicitaciones. Esa memoria muscular nunca se olvida, siempre queda y es clásico de un fuerza especial. Muchas gracias. Va a estar conformado por equipo Alfa, equipo Bravo, equipo Charlie. El equipo Alfa va a ser el equipo de asalto, que está también pelito, tic tac. Como... The unit has just received a tip off about a cocaine lab in a remote location. Our ride, a Huey on loan from the US Air Force. Similar to what was used in Vietnam. The plan, to fly 32 heavily armed police in three assault helicopters to destroy a single lab. This is a massive strike force considering our target is probably just a few guys like Paco and his assistant. Our landing site, a coca leaf plantation. There's a bit of an air of, uh, what the fuck next? There's no... We don't uh, know what's behind us. No, I mean, if... Theoretically, I'd have these blokes fucking shake, shaken out, basically covering all our arts. So it'd be a shitload of blokes full. I'd push them into the undergrowth as well. There's no, there's no point looking into that. You can't see anything. And then once you're in the undergrowth, you can start looking through it. And you've got no one fucking covering our ass. I don't really want to slate them. There's, there's a distinct lack of urgency. Uh, Foxy. Yeah. yeah. Se ha ubicado en esta dirección un laboratorio rústico, posa de maceración de cantación. Vamos a ir hacia allá. Too bunched up on some more liking. I notice you're pausing quite a lot. No, uh, just as you move through close undergrowth, you should close up, and then across that wide open space, you should be spread out apart. If you close up, someone with a machine gun take you out in two seconds. We finally reach our destination, a processing pit, where coca leaves are turned into cocaine paste. There we go, there's a working maceration pit. Obviously not working now, because they've all buggered off, but it's still doing the business. There's all coca leaves in there. You can smell the gasoline. You can smell all the chemicals that they use. People do live here, and it hasn't long been sort of vacated. You've got, you know, loads of different things. You've got batteries for a little bit of power. Light there tells us that they work at night, so they're working all the time, 24 hours a day. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can just look around. You can, there's signs of life. There's just no life here. Here, do you want to see some more signs of life? Or maybe a pair of pants? It's the inside intelligence telling them where they are. Uh, Foxy, esto, esto se utiliza para la posa y yeah. la gente también para chachar. Mm -hmm. Ya, yeah, agota. Huh? Acá. Ah? Just a leaf. Sí, se adormece, ¿no? Mm -hmm. La gente trabaja con esto porque no le da hambre. Uh -huh. 
it's hard not to feel like this is a bit of a pointless exercise. Pits like this cover the valley. Going to all this effort just to destroy one seems like a token gesture. This is a, this is a show of force by the, by, the, by the authorities, I'd say. When it comes to the war on drugs, people are more interested in the higher echelons. This is just a means of hitting the source, causing an embuggerance to the traffickers and mainly to the farmers that are sort of working these maceration pits, because all they've got to do once this place is gone is they'll find another location not dissimilar to this. There's enough rivers out here. Let's go and get three or four blokes from women, guys, kids, from Village X, get them down there, pay them some pittance cash, get them to dig another maceration pit done. Here in the frame, the narcos and the local communities rely almost completely on each other to survive. The police are mostly unwanted visitors. More often than not, damaging the livelihoods of those who have little to begin with. Come on then, let's go. Get him out. Because it's about to blow up, they set the fuses off. I think they forgot to tell us that. Every man for himself. Now watch. It's up, it's up. I think it's a forgotten area, there's no investment. You know, you go to the other places around the country. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a poor country, but this is a forgotten about place. Almost like, I mean, I don't know, do they, do they want cocaine to be exported? Do they want to be known for that? I think people here, they see themselves as individuals. They, have, they haven't got the luxury of choice and they have to do what they have to do. So yeah, it's a crime, but they're not criminals. During my travels across Latin America and the world of the narcos, I've seen how in Mexico, the cartels are now so powerful, they control vast areas of the country. While in Colombia, the cartels have industrialized the trafficking of drugs across the globe. Today, more drugs are being produced, trafficked, and consumed than ever before. It's become apparent that I think the war on drugs is being fought in the wrong way. And we're plowing a lot of money into weapons and, and armies and navies, when actually the war on drugs is actually, it's a war on poverty, because the people that do all the groundwork are from poverty-stricken backgrounds. They've got nothing else going for them. They've got no other prospects or opportunities, so they just go with what's in front of them, and that's working for the cartels and the gangs. <laughs> 